All right, everyone. Welcome back to another Welcome to the Day episode. I am your host, Jahans Manica, aka 12, aka Canadian Rebel. I have a very special guest with me. You guys know him. You guys love him for sure. Before I introduce him, make sure we, you like and subscribe to the Field of 68 Media Network to get content such as this. Uh, I love repping the Jays. You guys already know that. You can get content such as other uh, representative of the different alma maters like I'm doing today. Our guest has been a member of the Big East All-Freshman Team, a member of the Big East All-Second Team, and a first-team All-Big East performer at the time. As in his time at the Hilltop, he was the 49th pick in the 2021 NBA Draft, and is currently playing for the Austin Spurs in the G League. He is our good brother, our point guard, Marcus Zegarowski. <laughs> Welcome back to the J, bro. What's good with you? <laughs> All good over here, bro. What's up? Glad man, to be here. I'm chilling. I'm happy to see you again, man. It's been a little while, obviously, keeping tabs with your career. I'm so happy with how things are kind of turning out. Uh, that change of scenery for you from, you know, Long Island to Austin, I feel is going to be good for you and your career. How are you kind of feeling about that move? Obviously, give the Blue Jay fans a little bit of update of what you've been to in the last uh, couple of years. Yeah, I mean, obviously, um, things wouldn't really go my way in Long Island and uh, with the Brooklyn Nets, but uh, here playing for Austin Spurs, you know, it's just a better opportunity. You know, um, you know, I'm starting to play really well. You know, I'm getting a lot of minutes and just trying to just 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 continue to enjoy the journey. You know, you know, that's what it is, you know, being a professional athlete. You just got to enjoy the journey and, you know, just just um, you, you never know what, what could happen. So um, I'm staying ready uh, for anything that could happen and uh, just just working every day. I'm, I'm, I'm happy with my situation right now. It's such a tough grind, too, because like in your situation, especially, you never know when you're going to be treated to where, you know, like what team is going to lose a guy and you're going to be called up. Like you just literally always have to be alert. So I'm, I'm glad that you kind of brought that up. What yeah. I also like to see is you getting a little bit of familiar runs with one of your own old boys with Denzel being on your team, too. How's that been? And, and how much fun has it been to have a guy that you've been familiar with, obviously, in your uh, college career to be now with you as a professional? Oh, yeah, it's great having a familiar face in Denzel. You know, we were really close, you know, back in Omaha. And obviously we had, you know, a year, a year away from each other. You know, he, we both left at the same time. So it's good to be back, you know, have a, you know, like I said before, a familiar face, uh, a fellow Blue Jay. And, uh, you know, we, we, we watch games together sometimes and, um, you know, we hang out all the time. I think, I think we're going to go bowling later on today. Um, I mentioned that I, I'm doing this with you today and he said he wants to come and like, and, uh, surprise you or whatever at the end so i might text them and be like yo come hey. through so yeah so hell yeah good to have him, <laughs> we'd love to see him we haven't have, uh, been able to get in touch with denzel to be on the podcast he definitely needs to be on this podcast too for sure but we would love to see him uh today if he's able to come through at some point uh let's talk about what we witnessed the other night uh jays lose a very tough game to the now uh top of the standings leader in marquette 73 to 71 Extremely important game. Had the game had the Jays won that game, they would have had a share of the top place with Marquette. But now Marquette sits on the top all alone. Uh, Baylor Sharman, incredible game. 18 points, 13 rebounds. I thought this was as good as our bench players have played all year long. We've been kind of lamenting the lack of bench production, but they showed up in a big way. You know, you had four guys contributing to the scoreboard, uh, 15 points altogether. And yet and still, it wasn't enough for the Jays to beat Marquette on this night. I want to know what your initial reactions were to the game after you had a chance to watch. Yeah, I mean, I watched it, and um, it's a tough loss. You know, those those type of losses hurt, especially with the magnitude that it had. But, um, you know, you know, watching it, you know, I just – first half and the second half, I, th I thought they were just um, – just. You know, they were a different a different ball group, a, a, a different team, you know. I mean, that's – I mean, not saying they were bad in the second half, but it just – you know, turnovers re really, really play, played a huge role in that in the second half. But, um, you know, in, in those type of games, the only thing you can do is grow on it. So, especially, like, you know, losing such a close one, you know, I think they'll learn from it and it, it'll it'll pay dividends in the, in the biggest tournament in, Mar in March. So, you know, you, you, you got to take the – you know. You, you, you got to learn from, from from these type of games, and and they will. You were by far one of the more, like, solid point guards that Mag had 
uh, recruited to be a Blue Jay. Uh, you know, you were a very low turnover guy, very heady, always came to a two-foot jump stop in the paint. So I know for you, like like you just mentioned, like that second half was just turnover lane for the Jays. How tough was it for you to kind of watch that? Obviously, like being in those guys' shoes and kind of knowing how hard, like how hard it is not only to like maintain the pace of the game, but also like how hard you are on yourself when you turn the ball over frequently. Because like the Jays aren't known to be a high turnover team, but we've certainly seen like a couple of games now, like uh, <clears throat> where it just kind of gets away from him. So I want to know for you, what what was your thought process when you're watching all those turnovers in the second half? And, you know, what would you say to those guys, like as they get into the paint, as they're going at full speed, what are some of the things that you used to do to kind of slow yourself down and kind of limit those turnovers? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely tough because, you know, Coach Mack, you know, he wants to play so fast. He wants to, you know, mm -hmm. we're, we're going every – make or miss, we're going. So it's like, like – it's almost like – Rush, but don't hurry. You know, mm -hmm. you know that. That's what I would tell myself, and especially, you know, in the first half, it's almost, like they were playing the same way, but it's almost like they were playing more free. And then, I, like, they're they're also still young. You know, Ryan's young. Trey, they're still a young group. So, you know, one thing that they need to learn in the second half, you can still play fast, but you can't. You, you got to be more aware. You got to be aware of you know time and score and. You know, you know what's going on in the game. You know, the, the clearly, clearly the, the the momentum went to, went towards Marquette in the first four or five minutes. So, you know, when that when that thing when that happens, you, you got to limit mistakes. You know, just you, the, the the main focus is is to get a good shot. You know, a turnover is the worst possible thing that could happen in a game like that. So just just get a good shot. And uh, but you know, it's it, there's a there's a fine balance of playing fast and free but also like really under control and realizing that time and score and and uh you know like I knew when I had the ball in the second half of games like I knew who was hot I knew kind of you know where, where I should be going you know if, if if Mitch is hot or if you know Damian needs to post up Chris if Christian needs if Christian uh come ball screen me like like uh later in the shot clock like it's almost like you gotta you gotta play the mind game more often in the second half and let, let kind of less free, you know, just just going. You, it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, I know exactly what you mean for sure. Like, you kind of have to like flip the switch from pushing the pace to kind of understand, like, okay, like this might be a situation where we need to walk it up and make sure that we end the shot clock yeah, with a like good shot, like a shot that we want, right? It's like it's it's called yeah, like winning time. Like it's time, and now it's time to really win. It's like it's it's less about the physical attributes now. Now now it's time to put put your mind to you know. What's going on in the game? Who, who's? I think we need to get called winner a uh, look. You know, let's let's try and let's try and get to the room. Let's, let's get fouled. You know, let's mm -hmm. let's 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 play the mind game. And you know, you know that's that's one thing that I thought I I brought to the team is, you know, not only as a point guard making plays for others, but also using my mind to realize you know what's going on and kind of outsmart the other team and you know just just make more winning plays and usually that usually you win when you do that. Called Brenner, who has been so, you know, instrumental for the J success this year, kind of had a quiet game uh, defensively somehow, some way, even though he was challenging a lot of those shots, Marquette was able to make some of those tough floaters and layups around him in the paint. Um, and then offensively, he just, like you said, like he didn't get enough touches, in my opinion, I, I'm assuming in your opinion, too. Uh, you are a guy that obviously played with like baby Kalk when he was a freshman coming in. But talk to me about, like, obviously the growth that you've seen from him. He's kind of in the talks for Big East uh, Player of the Year. He's definitely, in, in my opinion, a lock to win Defensive Player of the Year back-to-back -back now. Uh, so talk to me about, like, one, he stole your number, and then, two, like, the growth that you've seen <laughs> uh, from Big Cocky over a couple of years. Yeah, funny story of that. I remember Coach <laughs> texting me saying, yo, he was only, he's only going to commit here if he takes my number. I said, yeah, you can have it, you can have it. And then as soon as he came, I was like, nah, homie. Nah, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe one or two more years, though, and then you got it. <laughs> Pull the plug right from under it, bro. <laughs> You're crazy. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, like, freshman year, obviously, you're a freshman. You know, it's tough to come into college basketball. I don't care who you are, you know, unless you're a Zion and Williamson, where you're going to make an immediate, immediate crazy impact. And, uh, you know, and he did make strides freshman year. I mean, it was a, he was a workaholic. I remember, like, I remember I was going to the gym late at night and he'd be in there working and stuff like that. And I would just tell him like, bro, like 
all the stuff you're doing now, all all, all this adversity you're going through right now is it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna, be, it's gonna pay dividends later in your career. And, and by sophomore junior year, you're gonna be one of the best players in the league, and then and then uh and ultimately the country. And uh he's 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 showing that. And um obviously the Marquette game wasn't his best showing, but um. You know, he's he's still, like you said, still one of the top players in the Big East. You know, should be defensive player of the year. You know, if they would have won first Marquette, and I would, it, it, it could have been a lock of player of the year. But now it's, you know, it's up in the air. You know, you, mm-hmm. and uh, I actually talked to him about it. I said, yo, because I went to go visit um my girlfriend in Omaha. And I was t- just telling him, I told him, I was like, bro, if you guys win these last four or five games, you know, you got a chance to win Big East player of the year. He goes, nah, I don't care about that. I just want to win all these games. And that just shows where his head's at. And, um. You know, he's grown so much. You know, I, I see him leading in practice. You know, freshman year is really quiet. So um, he's clearly um, growing every day, and um, I'm happy for him. That's one of the things that surprised me a lot these past couple of summers, having been able to go back to Omaha and train with the team and kind of watch him practice. I didn't realize how much personality and stuff that Kalki had. Like, that was one of the things, like, this past summer especially, uh, I was able to go to, like, a handful of workouts, kind of, see him interact with his teammates and stuff like that like yeah you're right he's absolutely become you know a little bit more of a vocal leader than probably what you were used to when he was there and it's just kind of nice to see that grow from guys who are just in the program who kind of grow within the program and obviously he's one of the go-to guys at Mac trust like this again wasn't his best showing but I also uh you know think about like what you said like it's also the guys around him who need to organize him because he's not a point guard he's not bringing the ball up so yeah he needs to have his touches set up by the other guys so i think it's, sure it's kind of have to be a mindset too of the entire guy or the entire team and the guys on the floor with him like hey how can we get cocky open in a position where he could be effective for us i yep. think we kind of went away from that a little bit against him in the market nah, game sure. and, you know I, i'd like to see that happen again yeah and then um you know also for him too uh, another you know form of growth you know i i wish i could tell him this is you know like look look at their starting five. You know, Arthur's a sophomore, Trey's a sophomore, Brian's a sophomore, and Baylor is a junior senior, but it's his first year in the program. So mm-hmm. I you know, I would like to see Ryan like, you know, in a timeout or like in a huddle, like, yo, like, like let's get me a look. Like right. hey, hey, like come off me, I'll, I'll roll, throw it back, and I'm I'm, I'm a hard roll. I'm a, instead of just coming down and just posting up right away, like when the defense is kind of ready. So, you know, I would like to see him lead and you know it's not really selfish because it's doing the team a, ser- a service because when he has the ball down there, it, it's either a, a good shot. It's a high percentage shot. What is he leading the NCAA per- in a uh, shooting percentage? Or they're going to double yeah. or they're going to double or triple team them and guys cut and guys get open, guys get easy shots. So I would like him to take charge. And, um, you know, you know, the offense is, the offense is starts when the five has the ball at the top of the key. And that's when we, that's when the dominoes get rolling. And um, I would like to see him make more plays up there as well. So, it, it 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 doesn't always have to be, you know, him posting up in, in the post, but it also can be him making plays up top and directing guys and you know leading that way. You know what I'm saying? No, I I know exactly what you mean. And since we're talking like more X's and O's, I'm gonna just tell you a little bit of what I saw, especially with Marquette's defense. Like a little bit of peekaboo defense. Are yeah. we going over? Are we going under screens? Ultimately, they were switching a lot of those ball screens, and I think the Jays kind of got stuck with like, okay, cocky has got a matchup down the. How are we going to feed him the ball? But kudos to Marquette's bigs who are strong, they're agile, they're quick yeah. too, able to like use their length to disrupt those passing lanes. And I thought that's where Crane really struggled. And yeah. like, you know, Coach Mack is so good at those like misdirection sets to get cocky open. None of yeah. those were really open. And that's because of the ball pressure and like the length uh, and nah, the yeah. awareness of the Marquette defense. So you got to give him props for that too. Yeah. Got to give credit where credit is doing. Marquette did a hell of a job. Like, mm-hmm. Like you know, in college, like college basketball, man, if you if 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 the scout is is done really good, like you got a good chance of winning. And clearly, Shaka Smart, they yep. had a great scout. Like they were in the gaps, they were talking, they were. It's like they were all on a string, and it's tough to beat teams like that. And you know, in in order to beat teams like that, you gotta you gotta get stops. And unfortunately, they didn't get as many stops second half. Which you know, getting stops leads to transition baskets, and that's when the Jays are at their best. And you know, that's what really hurt them is you know their half court offense. It got stagnant. Yeah, and and but even like we're talking about like kind of all the the negatives, we still exactly. had a chance to exactly be in yeah. the game, which is I'm, kind I'm of crazy. Hard, like I'm we... hard on, I'm hard on them. <laughs> yeah. I expect, I expect, just... a, I, yeah, you know, you know how it is. Oh, a hundred percent. Which is, I mean, we're talking about all these things that we didn't do right, but we still had a chance to win. 
but at yeah. the very least, like push the envelope into the into overtime. Yeah, a couple of questionable calls for sure. Like exactly. I'm not a guy that likes to point fingers or scapegoat, but if I am, there's a couple of referees I like to point fingers at too. Uh, yep. But it's just kind of like you know, you got the Ryan and hard tip at the end. They call a foul immediately. I think the ref there is anticipating the foul call. Uh, yep. So like literally like point zero one came off the clock and he had already blown his whistle. So I thought that kind of gave the, the Jays a disservice. They missed two free throws on the other Marquette does. Baylor has a chance to heave it from three quarters court. I thought there was a little bit of contact there, but I fully understand why refs will not call that call down yep. to a three quarter court heave. They're not going to call a foul necessarily unless the guy blatantly tackles the guy. Mm -hmm. I was frustrated watching it. I just wanted to know, like, down the stretch, seeing them miss those two free throws, the rebound goes to Baylor. He has a chance to heave it. Maybe some contact, maybe not. No foul. This called the, the game kind of ends. What was your thoughts on that? And, and, as a competitor that I know that you are, how freshening was it? Because uh, I feel like sometimes I just want to jump into the screen and throw a Jays jersey on. <laughs> Did you kind of feel that way too? No, yeah, I was I was pretty mad, you know, especially with the the back mm -hmm. tab that Namhard did to that led to Cogburner layup. You know that that mm -hmm. hurts. But like you said, you know, I, I I also hate putting the game in the refs' hands. Like it's hard to put the game in on that one play. Like like. If I'm on the team, if I'm on the team right now, I would have been like, yo, we 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 were up to 15. What, what, like, what was the score at halftime? We were up 12 or 13? Yeah, uh, no, I thought it was up nine at half because I thought they oh, made a shot to cut it under 10, yeah, 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 if I remember yeah, correctly. Yeah, 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 they did. But, mm -hmm. yeah, so, and, and we didn't – they didn't play their best second half. You know, they came out, honestly, pretty soft the first four or five minutes. And, I, mm -hmm. I, and knowing how Coach Mack is in that locker room when they're up nine, he's probably like, yo, like, these first four zero, he zero says, ball game. Yeah, he always <laughs> says those first four minutes are going to determine this game and how and how, right. how how you know how it's going to go like your momentum and you know the energy you know just everything you know like even with the fans like it those first four minutes are probably one of the most important minutes in the game. Obviously, not regarding the, mm -hmm. the last two minutes, but uh yeah. So you know as a competitor, I of course I was mad at the rest, but at the end of the day, like. You can't point at one play like it's that's that tough to do that because you know it's a forty minute ball game. Every play matters, especially right. in that type of game. Yeah, you, you definitely can't point it at the one play or the two plays. You know, like yes. you said, like we limit the turnovers, we get good shots. Like imagine, as opposed to like those. Uh, I think at one point the Jays were at like seven turnovers, like with, before the twelve minute mark. Yeah. Instead of all those turnovers, if we get a shot up, as good as shooters as we are, as good of players as we have. Like, you are pushing the lead. You're not resetting the lead. So yep. I, I agree yep. with you for sure. Like, that's a very valid point. I think it's kind of a little bit of a Monday morning quarterbacking to go back and be like, well, the rest should have gave us this call or whatever. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. But it, we, should, we should never have let it – never let it come to that point even. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, but still, like, the ref, they, they, they did. They, even on the line, <laughs> yeah, but... even, even, even on the even on the box show, bro, like – yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He was just like, oh, grab, yeah, that, that box like, out was crazy. Yeah. So it, there were multiple calls that were suspect, especially like, I hate to say it, but come on, we we home. There's 18,000 fans. Like, you know, like we're supposed to be on our side, like, right now. Like, right. Especially, <laughs> you know, Coach Max, like, the, what is he, like, the the the, uh, the, long, the longest tenured yeah. coach in the Big East now? So it's like, yeah. it, now it's his turn. <laughs> it was Jay Wright these past freaking three four years and i was there so now it could be told max like he needs to get the calls like that, hey. that's what i would say to the ref like yo this this is the new jay right yo what in the, what in terms of the ref. So funny, though, you're talking about like that box out right on um olivier uh fuck i'm forgetting his name uh from yeah. marquette but here's the thing though here's why i'm laughing because I, as a jays fan i was like yo that's that's BS. Like, that's not – how is that a blockout foul in any stretch of the imagination? But as a Canadian, I was like, yeah, that's how we play. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you yeah. run in there, you look for Canadians. contact, and you plop like crazy. Yeah, yeah. Like that, I went to school with a few I'm, Canadians. So that, I went to school. <laughs> yeah, that sounds, just, that sounds about right. That sounds about right. So – on the lows, I was like, yo, that sucks. But, like, high key, I was just like, okay, like, that's a Canadian. Like, that's – like, because, look, I'll be honest. Like, and this year to kind of change the rule now, like, I think you get, like, a flop warning and a technical foul, right, in college uh, game yeah. now, like, which is similar to the pros, which I actually kind of – I'm a big fan of. Uh, but when I was in the Jays uniform and Jays fans noticed, I definitely got away defensive if it was some 
charges, some running into screens, slamming my head back kind of thing. Oh, like, yeah. To kind of play, you got to play the game a little bit. And I think kudos to him. He played the game just enough, even though yeah. we all agree it was a BS call. But, hey, he got an extra possession. Oh, I think he got two free throws out of that for Marquette. Yep. And yep. it's the game within the game. And in that moment, he kind of won. So, unfortunate yeah. for us, but heady play from, from yeah, Marquette get back player to, right yeah, there. Yeah, using your mind of, in those moments, you know, when you use that mental – to kind of mm-hmm. just outsmart, you know, kind of cheat cheat the refs a little bit, which is kudos to them, like you said. But yeah, it, it, it's, it's <laughs> tough. It's tough, nonetheless. Uh, at the end of the game, there we had a couple of our fans, you know, throw stuff in the direction of Marquette's bench as they were exiting, which is totally unacceptable. Coach Mack addressed that in the post game, and I'm very much uh, I stand with him 110 percent there. Like that is not at all who we are as Creightonians, as Blue Jays fans. Uh, it was an emotional game for everybody, for sure, our fans included, but I just think there's no reason to throw any per- paraphernalia at the court, at the players who are, who are li- leaving the game, or at the opponent's bench. Like, let's just nip that in the bud. I just wanted to throw that out there for Korean fans. Like, that, that's not who we are. Let's not kind of smear our name uh, in the lore of college basketball because a couple of hotheads decided to throw, you know, whatever it is that they threw towards Marcus. But let's just nip that in the bud. Immediately. Uh, sure. We had a couple of fan questions because they knew you were coming on the show, Marcus. Man, you still got some love out in Omaha, bro. Like, I don't know how often you're able to come back, but you definitely still got some love out in Omaha. I'm going to read you a couple of questions. We're going to address them a little bit. Uh, first one comes from Blue State, knowing that you're going to be on the podcast. She or he says, um, two of my favorite Jays of all time. What do you guys think about Kaluma being benched? Also, why wasn't Reef playing more down the stretch? Uh, he had some great minutes on Kolik, the market point guard. Appreciate y'all. So let's address the first part about Max's decision a little bit to to go with Farabello down the stretch as opposed to Kaluma. I'll give my two cents on it and I'll have you respond, Marcus. I think that like that's kind of like a gutsy uh, call or, or you just kind of follow your gut as a coach about what's going right right now, what's going wrong, what do we need on the court and whatnot. I think Kaluma was kind of having himself not the best game of this year obviously and Farabello had made a couple of threes up to that point uh you had Marquette who were going kind of three-quarter court uh press falling back into a two-three zone which Marcus you know this in max zone offense there's a lot of room for catch and shoot threes which is what Farabello excels at and at this point in his career it's not quite what Kaluma excels at so I think I kind of understand uh his perspective as to why down the stretch he wanted to go with that lineup and then on the other end, Mac kind of threw a little bit of wrinkle of his own. We don't see him go to two, three zone that much. We certainly didn't play when I was there. I know your teams. I watched just about every dribble that you had as a collegiate athlete. Uh, Marcus, you guys didn't play that much either. Uh, and it's a good way to hide for Abella, who's not an all world defender. And at the same time, kind of add a wrinkle to what Marquette was doing offensively. What's your take on it? Do you feel like uh, it was a good or a bad call for Kaluma to be not be out there, especially when the game was winding down? Yeah, I mean, I feel like Coach McDermott always does what's best for the team. And in that mm-hmm. moment, I, you know, obviously Arthur, he's had a great year. You know, he's had a lot of great games. And, you know, this wasn't his best outing. And, you know, he just won the game at St. John's. And um, Coach trusted him in that moment. So it's all about, you know, the, the situation. And, you know, obviously that was a game where it's almost like the team that makes the least amount of mistakes, you know, at, pretty much win the game. Yeah. Parabello Fer- doesn't really make many mistakes. You know, he doesn't he doesn't force things. He he's heady. He's smart. He he just he he, he he like you said, he knocks down throughout. He had a great backdoor pass to uh Nemhard for the AM one, I think. That's right. So yep. it's like, you know, he, he's also a vet, you know, what is this? His fourth year fifth fourth, fifth year college basketball. So he knows, you know, being in these moments, he's kinda of, he's pretty familiar, he's pretty calm in these moments. So, you know, obviously if and if Arthur had a you know, a great game leading up to that point, he probably would have stayed in. But, you know, if I'm Arthur, you know, I take it, I take it on the chin and I learn from it. And, um, you know, I look forward to next game and uh, to play my best and, you know, play J- play Jays basketball. And that's unselfish. That's making good plays for others. That's being aggressive on both ends of the floor and, you know, not getting down on yourself and not um, not worrying about the last play. You know, it's got to be the next play mentality. And I think that's what he's going kind of going through right now. But I thought it was oh, – I know. Yeah. I, I was going to say, I know Arthur and his like mentality. He's kind of cut from the same cloth as you as far as like, I, this wasn't my best show. Like, I'm going to show him next time. So I'm expecting him to have yeah. a big game against Villanova on Saturday. 
because yeah. I know like that is not uh, the impression that he wants to leave in Jay's minds of, of him like not being able to participate in those, like you call them, those winning time moments. Uh, in the same breath, obviously, like we had Sharif who played pretty well. I've been a very big fan of Sharif his whole career. I've always been, you know, trying to make sure that he gets extra touches or extra playing time because I think he's very valuable for a team that is lacking in like bench production. Um, so I would say like down the stretch in a situation like that, like if, if you're going to put Sharif on, like we just talked about Farabella being put on for Kaluma, then who would you take off? I don't think you're taking off Trey in that moment. I don't think you're taking off uh, Ryan Nemhard in that moment. Uh, you need the rebounding that Sharman brings you, obviously, and you're certainly not going to have him spell Kalki. So I think that's just kind of like, if you're going to go with Farabello to replace Kaluma, which I think is a position that maybe Sharif could have vied for in that yeah. moment, uh, then like that's the only way that that would work. Or else, like, I just think that uh, Mac, again, just kind of went with his gut, and he said, these are the five that I think are going to give us the best chance to come back into this game. And to his credit, Loki, like we let that Ryan Nemhard foul at the end. If if that is called right in our opinion, then it's a Mac looks like a genius today as exactly, we talk about yeah. it. And, and, yeah, so it's part, just it's these small margins. So different, yeah. Right. No, <laughs> exactly. <sure. laughs> no, yeah, exactly. And I agree. I, obviously, in that moment, they went zone as well. So if they put Reef in instead of Farabello, they would have been real small. And you know how it is in a zone; it's hard to rebound. And they also needed, you know. They also needed guys that could spread the floor. And, and Reef has hit down some shots lately, but Fairbill is obviously more proven at the three-point line than Reef. And um, so, and, uh, you know, like you said, I it's it's hard not to trust Mac. He's made a lot of – he's made a, mil, he's made a thousand guts, gutsy decisions that everyone's like, yeah. uh, but he's like, what's this? And it, and it usually works out in our favor. He surprised me a lot of the time, you know. So um, Yeah. There's so many things like – Oh God, that's why I always call him like an offensive genius, especially offensively, where I'm thinking like, there's no way this is going to work, right? And my best example of that is like, we are gearing up to play St. Joseph's in Philadelphia in a non-conference game my senior year. St. Joseph's was a really tough team that had three NBA right. guys on that team. And as we're practicing, he's like, all right, guys, we're going to try this new inbound play. And when Max says we're going to try something new, in my mind, I'm like, okay, like, cool. It's going to have some structure. Like, it's obviously going to be a deception one way in order to get us an open shot somewhere else. Bro, he had uh, Grant Gibbs inbounds the ball. It was me, Austin, Ethan, and Doug literally run around in a circle from the free throw line, right? And then yeah. at, at some point, we just kind of decide who can get open for who, like, and just kind of screen in, and whoever it is that feels good, can pop out and take the shot. I'm just like, bro, there's no way this is going to work. <laughs> I want you guys to go back and watch the clip. We're down two, or down one, sorry, at St. Joe's. We run that play with 35 seconds left. Doug pops out, makes a three and one, and we win the game. Like, <laughs> so it's just yeah, kind of like, you just have to accept that he kind of knows what he's talking about in those situations. Yeah. And I know, like, obviously, like I said, this is a little bit of Monday morning quarterbacking that we're doing. But I do appreciate, you know, the fan questions. And this is another one that's going to kind of challenge what Mac was uh, doing. This is Kyle Brayman, Kyle underscore Brayman on Twitter. Thoughts on the call to have Call Grinder intentionally foul Oso. So this is when there was about three and a half minutes left in the second half. Oso, who's their big, uh, is about a 51% three-point shooter, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, maybe you guys could quote me if I'm wrong or whatever. But not not the best free throw shooter. Um and Mac decided to kind of go hack a also. Uh, he goes to the line, he makes two. And that was the last of that. I think that put Marquette up four at that point, if I'm not mistaken. Again, I, I'll just say that this is just yeah. one of those like gutsy decisions. Like you're a coach, mm -hmm. you see the flow of things, you kind of play the percentages, maybe try to steal a possession uh, from how the game is going. I mean, yeah. you if, if you get called up by the Spurs, you're going to have Coach Pop, who's – known for hack a shack and hack a dwight and hack a whoever the bad free throw shooter is so again marcus yeah. kind of want to know what your thoughts are on that yeah i mean you know you know mac is the game is all about percentages you know how, mm -hmm. do, how do we what's the best percentage of us winning the game okay he shoots 50 percent from the line we could we could use an extra possession let's 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 go out swinging let's let's use all of our all of our tactics to win and um yeah i don't i don't mind that at all you know if i'm playing i'm 
you know, I'm, I'm agreeing with him if I'm playing because because you know their offense they, they were, market was rolling at, at at the time you know they were mm -hmm. they were they were getting to the basket you know they were almost getting whatever they wanted and the momentum was was in their favor and you know doing just doing something like that even if they, even even that he made them you know it kind of it kind of disrupts the flow a little bit so um it's a it's a heavy play it obviously didn't he made both it didn't work in our favor but like like you said if he misses both we don't have this question isn't <laughs> asked so right i hate you know it's almost like what's the process of the situation like let's focus on that not not always the result because you know we we, we don't we don't really control the result of the situation we control the process of it so the process was there you know the, that was the right call and and, and Coach Mack knew if he makes them, we're still going to live with the result. He didn't foul knowing he was going to make both. Like, clearly, that's not how it works. But so I live yeah. with it. Bro, I, I need you to say that again because you just dropped a dime low key. It's not about the result. It's about the process of it. Say, say what you just said again, bro, because that, yeah. was, that was some knowledge for the young boys out here. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just saying that, like, that, that type of question is kind of – is focused on the result of, of what happened. Mm -hmm. he, well, he wasn't asking about – he was, he's asking because he made the shots, you know, that, that's right. really why he's asking. So, you know, Mac, Mac, Coach Mac doing that, it's, it's because the process, like he's, he's 50% from the line. So the, the, the percentages say he's going to, he's going to miss one out of two. And that's still one possession game. So, right. So we'll live with it. You know, the process was there. We, you know what I'm saying? So it's, I don't even know. I don't even know what I said before. Yeah, no, I, I we'll we'll run it back. Like whoever is listening to this, run it back and listen to what Marcus just said. The way that you framed it was just that was that was a dime yeah, well, you just I mean, dropped that's for how, sure. That's how I live. My that's how I, that's how I approach the game now. You know, that's how yeah. it's almost how I wish I approached it back then when I was in college. I just was too dumb to realize it. You know, it's not always about the result of of each game and of your individual performance. It's you know the process yeah. of it. It's 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 doing the work early and getting in the right mindset and um, just being the best version of yourself. And then, you know, you, you, you live with the result because we're human mm -hmm. beings. We, we, we can only, we only can control so much. So in that moment, no. coach couldn't, coach couldn't control him making the free throws, but he could, <laughs> he could control him oh. going to the line. The if if Matt could have controlled him making the free throws, he would have jumped off the bench to try to block it himself. That's what so. I'm saying. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. Bro, exactly. So, we exactly. have uh, Leahy Mall Yacht Club, who this is more of a comment. Uh, they mentioned Reef has been a great contributor lately. Really good to see Kaluma runs hot and cold. That was a reply to Blue State's question about, you know, Kaluma uh, not being out there um, for those, those critical moments. We have Sam Norland who's asking, uh, or I guess is a question and a comment we avoided extended scoring drops for quite a while and then we were bitten by them the past couple of contests what's the mindset when it seems like there's a lid on the basket and what's the best way to avoid those struggles going forward really good question um like i said like there was a like a four and a half five minute drought there where uh the jays couldn't score but on the other side we had like a six minute uh, defensive stance where Marquette was really struggling to score too. Uh, what's the best thing to do to avoid that going forward? It's, it's kind of tough to say, you know, that's kind of how the game of basketball is. Unfortunately, we call it a game of runs for a reason. Basketball is, very, is a very momentum driven sport. You could have a 31% three point shooter knock down two in a row because your 42% three point shooter just made three. Like that's just kind of how it goes. Or at the same time, you could have like a 90% free throw shooter miss two. And then all of a sudden everybody else on the on the court is going down and missing one of the two free throws. Like it, 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 sometimes it's just a domino effect about basketball. I don't know quite how to explain it. And as much as you practice yeah. and all that stuff, like sometimes it, that just happens. You just kind of have to hope that it doesn't happen in critical moments. Uh, what's your best uh, advice, I guess, to not have a lid on the basket the way the Jays did? Yeah, I mean, I remember my freshman year, we we lost a lot of close games. Like, and it it, it, it was because of our, you know, the way we played the last three four minutes. You know, our shot selection, you know, not being totally togetherness. Like at the end of games, like like on a string defensively and knowing the scout and knowing what what we want them to take and and uh and then rebounding and um and then it it it, it changed sophomore year and 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 that and that was led because of our togetherness. You know, I think it. It was these last three minutes, you know, like they need to come together and be like, yo, what do we need to do to get our best, to, to get the best shot on offensive end and then 
and then and then whatever falls after that. And that's getting back on defense. That's like doing everything correct. Like just building all the good habits. And I feel like at times, you know, I mean they're young. You know, they don't they don't truly truly understand that yet. That it's like it's hard winning games. Like it's really hard. Mm-hmm. It takes a lot of focus. It takes togetherness. It takes like not making many mistakes. You know, I I, I hate to say it, but you know that's it's it's. Cause it's 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 a mental battle. You're playing mistake free basketball. You got to sacrifice a lot. You got to be you got to be locked in all the way. So, especially in those moments, you know, when it's a two two point game, three point game, and you need a basket, and you, you need a stop. It's it's together. It's not missing. It's not missing a box out. It's not. It's being in the gaps. It's knowing who's the shooter. It's 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 knowing it's knowing who's in foul trouble. Who should we attack on the offensive end? It's, it goes back to you know using your mind and just. Just being totally locked in. I know it sounds like kind of cliche. It's like, bro, they're, they're clearly locked in. But, like, no, they're, they're, you, you know how it is. Like, there's a difference between playing Marquette for the biggest title game and playing uh, your first two games of the season where you're like, uh, mm-hmm. like, I'm still locked in, but I could definitely be more locked in. And, uh, so, you know, you well, know, they're learning from it. Yeah, go ahead. No, I was going to say it kind of goes, you know, we kind of talked uh, off the air a little bit before we started recording about familiarity and playing an opponent a couple of times uh, uh like a yeah. year obviously in this situation in your situation now that you're you're in cali recruiting this you played santa cruz last night you're gonna play him again tomorrow uh when you get that familiar familiarity between teams especially like in this situation in biggie's conference like teams know each other they know each other's yeah. tendencies all that stuff that is what makes competition what it is, is you got to find other things that is going to separate uh, yourself from like what they see on film and what they can prepare for. And I think what you mean, it, like if, like, uh, you know, correct me if I'm mistaken, I think what you mean is uh, as far as, you know, being more locked in, I think what you're trying to say is just like, you got to find other ways that is not necessarily predictable to what the team it knows that you're going to be able to do like for example like we know Baylor Sharman's a really good three-point shooter they're gonna run him off the line and it, to his point these past couple of games he's been getting to the mid-range a little bit more getting to the basket a little bit more understanding that that's what the teams are primarily taking away am I wrong in saying like that's what you mean by being like a little bit more locked in as far as uh yep. finding different ways different avenues to get the yeah. result that you want because the other team knows how you're supposed to get what you want yeah, it's, it's it's it goes back to like the impact on winning. Like, throw the box score out of out, out of the picture. Like, how do you impact winning in those moments? You know, that, that's what's gonna show. Like, like, uh, like, just like the like like I said before. Like, it's the little stuff. It's it's so hard to explain, but it's like it's knowing the scout. It's it's um it's making the making the extra play. It's it's um you know it, and it all starts before the game. It's are, are you reading the scout? Are you are you are you are you being a great teammate? Are you are you staying positive in these moments? Like if, if your shot's not falling, like what are you bring to the table? It's like it's like the little stuff that, you know, like I remember my my sophomore year, Mitch, Mitch are like 0 for 12 from the from the field and he was he was the most positive person in the locker room. He was the most positive person on the floor. He was still talking like crazy. Like it's like stuff like that. And 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 I know like I go back to Arthur, like he clearly didn't have a good game offensively, but he can still he can still impact the game in uh, in a positive way, and that's rebounding. That's you know, boxing out. That's like it's it's, it's the little stuff that'll keep you on the floor, and that'll impact winning as well. So I just want them to, I I just want them to do that because you know, because they have so much potential, and I, I, I and I just don't want to see them, you know, lo- you know, lose a game because you know they just didn't want to sacrifice a little bit and, or didn't want to put in that extra effort that won't show up in the box score. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I definitely agree with you there. Uh, last couple of comments from our fans on Twitter. We have uh, Rob List who commented on someone else's uh, question about uh, Farabello getting the minutes over Kaluma, who says, I think Bello got minutes over Reef due to his ability to move without the ball and hit three-point shot. I think you addressed that a little bit too, Marcus. Uh, I think Reef could have played a little bit more, especially in the last two to three minutes. Again, that's kind of a gutsy call from Coach Mack there. Uh, we have Blue State saying uh, agreed. Again, that's back to the who got minutes in the last uh, few moments. I thought Bello gave some good minutes too, uh, but Reef could have slowed down Kolek, who killed us in those final minutes as well. Hey, kudos to Kolek because, like I said, you and I both talked about how good Kalki is at defending the paint. 
that is not an easy task. Like I think that's how good Cockburner has uh been these past couple of seasons that Jays fans are maybe starting to take a little bit for granted how difficult to, it is to challenge all these shots and to deter all these shots. So like in a game where like guys are making a couple on him, all of a sudden we're just like, oh, well, what could we have done different? It's like, hey, this is the best defender in the Big East. And they happen to have a night where they're able to make shots around him. It doesn't happen often. And the Jays are where they are because of Cocky's presence. Of course, you could add another great perimeter defender like uh, uh, like Sharif, right? But it kind of doesn't stop where Marquette got to, the shots that they were able to make in in tough situations. And again, they miss a couple of those shots, like you mentioned, Marcus, a couple of times. We were having a different podcast. We're not even asking those questions today. Yeah. We're cheering the Jays and we're cheering Mac for all of the great calls that they made. So it's just a game of margins, man. Sometimes it just kind of goes that yeah. way. The ball doesn't bounce your way. Yeah, like I mean, like you said, like Kolek made some tough, some really good plays down the stretch. But mm-hmm. what set up those really tough plays is the plays he made in the first half. Second half, you know, if you watch the game, like they were they were late dump offs that were that were that that, that, that were there for him. And even when he mm-hmm. took a layup, their Kolk would uh um try and block it, and and, and, and they would just off the rebound and put it back in. So it's like it, it goes back to what I was saying before. It's 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 the extra effort, you know. If Kolk's gonna Cox gonna come block the shot. He needs to trust the guy to come down and and uh and and hit the guy for a box out or or come down and um and guard his man. You know, so it's like yeah, it's that extra effort. It's that that sacrifice. It's that it's that extra play down the stretch that's gonna matter. And um and it Cole, like, you know he 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 made the right reads. You know, Cog Brennan was worried about the dump off and worried about the late roll and worried about the offensive rebounding, which made him kind of give him a lane to, to, to shoot the layup or shoot the floater. So, mm-hmm. um, it goes, but it goes back to you, you know, using it, using his head. You know, he, he was smart, you know, with his decisions. Yeah. Uh, thank you to our fans who asked those questions on Twitter. Uh, Jays still have a ton to play for. Like I mentioned earlier, they got Bill yeah. on Saturday. Uh, winning there is going to put him right back in the conversation for uh, top of the Big East. Of course, they need a little bit of help from the other guys uh, around the league as far as who's going to be playing uh, Marquette. We saw UConn had a big win against Providence uh, as well. You have definitely been in those situations on that uh, Jays team that had a share of the Big East uh, regular season championship before you guys went off to New York and the pandemic happened, which was a whole even crazy situation. Uh, but like this is the kind of situation you find yourself in. A couple of games left in the season, you have to make sure you handle business, and you gotta ask for a little bit of help around the league in order to get a share of that Big East regular season championship. Your team has been the only team in Max tenure in the Big East to be able to do that. Talk to me about like down the stretch. Obviously, if you could look back, what was going through your mind at the time as far as like what you can control. And then, like, now that you were able to achieve that, you were a member of a team that was able to hang a banner. Uh, now that you look back on it, like, what kind of sense of accomplishment do you have? And, like, what are some of the memories that you have of those few, like, three, four games left in the regular season down the stretch, knowing that you have a chance at winning a Big East championship game or a Big yeah. East regular season championship? Yeah, I mean, we we knew we needed to handle business. And uh, we also knew other teams needed to – you know, win certain games, and we needed. I think we needed. <laughs> yeah. We need. We needed Villanova to beat. So, you know, at Scene Hall, where uh-huh. Scene Hall already beat them at Villanova, so we were like, "Oh, it's gonna be tough." But like, I I just remember like yeah. we were in the locker room, like, "Bro, we we just gotta control what, what we can control, and that's us winning games, and that's us getting better every day, us coming in ready, and just being being our best versions of ourselves." And that's what Coach said. Coach was just like, "Yo, like, obviously we we know we need other teams to, you know." Do us favors and help us get in that Big East title picture. But if we if we lose, then 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 it's really over. So let's focus on, you know, our wins and um to to give us the best possible get best possible chance of you know winning the Big East or ha- having a great seat in the Big East tournament. And um so yeah, just focus on you know what you can control and that's coming in practice every single day and and just being the best version of yourself and, you know, win, winning these next couple games, you know, at Nova is going to be a tough game. Like Nova's rolling right now. They just beat at Xavier. So it's like, you know, they already have their hands full. They have no time to worry about what Marquette's doing, you know. Um, So, yeah, just focus on focus on Creighton right now and, and beating Nova. And then we'll, we'll, they'll worry about what's next and what's next after that. But, you know, there's no there's no better time like the present. So 
focus on right now and let everything else take care of itself. So Marcus, I know that you're like literally one of the most focused players that I've met in this of my time playing basketball. Uh, I, I, but I'm still having a hard time believing you as far as like, you know, obviously you have to focus on yourself because if you don't win the games, I agree with you. No way you can even put yourself in that situation. But how much like peeking around the corner are you doing? Oh, yeah. When you're yeah, watching yeah. these other teams. <laughs> no, no, yeah. Saying. I'm like, definitely Because it's not attention. totally up to you, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I was def you're definitely paying attention to it for sure. For sure. Because you want that moment. And it's, it's crazy talking about this because before we played Georgetown, mm -hmm. I remember like everything when I was there, bro. Hell yeah. Oh, let's hear it, bro. Because I think it was George. Because we played Georgetown and then Seton Hall for the title, right? I'm pretty sure. Yeah, because yeah, Seton Hall was that last game, and you guys went berserk in there. And I just remember, like, because uh, where was I that year? I think I was in Hungary that year. I had you guys on the big screen uh, in my living room. Like, usually I just watch it on my iPad, whatever, but I actually, like, connected it to the TV. And, bro, no, I was losing my mind on a Saturday. Bro, like, listen, I was bro. losing my mind. <laughs> We're playing Georgetown, and you... Was this was the was the new locker room there when you were there? But you you you've been there though, right? I've 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 had a chance to see it. I'm very jealous of it. Uh, but you're talking about the one um at CHI, right? Yeah, or yeah, you're talking with, about yeah. championship so, center. At the at the CHI. Yeah. Yeah. So like in the locker room, there's a big TV, whatever. And sometimes they put on games, and I think the, the the Nova versus Seton Hall game was on. And right. We, it, it's like during during while we were like you know our pregame meal or like we're taking, we're taking a nap before the game. Like a lot of us would stay after shoot around just to hang out and chill. And it was on, we were just like, damn, we, and it was such a close game. We, and we needed Nova to win and they won. So that gave us like, Oh man, now we gotta, now we gotta beat Georgetown. Like, and then we gotta be seen Hall, and then we'll, we'll have a chance to share the league. So yeah, going back, obviously pay attention to it, but like our main focus was, as a, for me, it was like the next game. Cause I was just like, yeah, let's, let's go bust it. Let's go bust Georgetown's ass. Cause Right. <laughs> so it's like, and, and then we'll focus on Seton Hall. And even if, even if uh, they do win, we still want to beat them. But uh, it definitely works in our favor. You know, you know, you have to get a little luck sometimes in life. And that was one of those moments mm -hmm. where it came up big. And yeah, that was a surreal moment winning that big, especially even when I hurt my knee that game. It was, it was, I had a crazy, like mo my emotions were like this, bro. Like, yeah, like, I, I still have, I didn't truly, like enjoy it as much as I wanted to because my knee was all messed up because that last I was so worried about not playing the biggest tournament or not playing in March Madness so I was all but I definitely still enjoyed it I, I, I my family was there so it was dope and that was a surreal feeling bro that was crazy bro I I vividly remember that and then like I remember leading up until the next week I was just like damn like if Marcus can't play Biggie's tournament they're like what shot do we really have lo and behold you guys play a half and then the pandemic yeah. starts people are asked to stay away from each other like fans <laughs> are like leaving mass and square garden since i have you now i guess i never had a chance to really ask you that question i'm not sure if anybody else has what was like kind of going through you guys's mind in the locker room like matt comes in he's just like yep gather your stuff uh we're going back to the hotel we're gonna try and fly back to omaha tonight if we can stay away from your friends and family. Like, what was going through your mind as, as all that's unfolding? Bro, I mean, I just remember, like, so I'm hurt. So I'm on my phone, whatever, and I'm seeing every other tournament get canceled. I'm seeing the ACC get canceled. I'm seeing the Big Ten, the Big 12, all get canceled. Mm -hmm. And we had an early – our game was at, like, 11 or 12. So I'm like – and and we were in New York City, like, the hot spot at the time, like, where it all – where it was kind of – it was crazy, bro. Like, New York was hot. <laughs> like, if you went outside, it was like a movie, bro. People were running around, like – People were like, people didn't know what to do. And then obviously we played a half and then we were like, damn, like this joint might get canceled. And the coach came in, we're right. like, we're calling it the rat. Um, and, you know, there were still thought, still talks about playing March Madness. So I was like, but I'm pretty sure we all went home or like we had a chance to go home. Like they didn't even want to fly back to Omaha or whatever. Mm -hmm. Cause like they, cause school was like almost can't obviously canceled or, or like I was online. So I remember I went home and, it was just the worst feeling because even though I wasn't playing, I was just like, oh, this shit. It was, it was just like we went from winning the Big East title in front of, like, <laughs> the best fans until, like, I'm going home just to, like, it was, this was not what I – bro, I was so – I was – it was – it was – I cried, bro. It was tough, bro. It was tough. Yeah. 
I, I can dope. only imagine going through it. I always remember that first half of the St. John's game as the breakout game for our homie who was a walk on at the time. God, I want my blank on his name. Jet. Yeah, Jet. Woo, that was the Jet half of a lifetime. Jet came off the bench. Whack him. Whack him. Whack him. <laughs> we, we was talking about that because I saw him when I went down to Omaha like during mm -hmm. All-Star break. Yeah, we, he, 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 he was there as well for a couple of days. Like, we was talking about that. Ew, that was crazy. He was, like, was gonna, uh, he was like, I was going to go crazy second half too. Like. <laughs> 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 uh, bro i'm telling you like i remember being like damn like we like what is it gonna look like without marcus and then jet came in and totally changed the game around i think you guys were still down two at half if i'm not mistaken or whatever yeah but yeah it, that's just one of those surreal moments like i i always wanted to ask you that question i'm glad that i was finally able to um because yeah like you said like this team that we're talking about right now uh with nemhard with Kalki, with uh trey with kaluma with Charmin reminds me so much of that team that you had with you yeah. at the helm, you know, with uh, Denzel coming off the bench at the time with DJ. Uh, Ty, uh, Mitch, Chris. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Uh, Mitch and um, Ty uh, Sean. Or, Ty Sean Alexander. I almost said Trey Alexander again. But yeah, Ty Sean was such a like uh, instrumental part of that team. But that's why like, I think like that balance of, of like that, that team that potentially could have gone even further than the Sweet 16, and then the team that you ended up coming back with the next year that eventually went to the Sweet 16. There's such com good comparisons on both teams uh, with yeah. how Ryan plays and how you played or whatever. So that's why, like, I'm really thinking that these Jays, if they're able to put it together, have yeah. a real shot to bring us back there. And that, I think that's also why we're so passionate about this team. Yeah. And we just want to see the best for them. You know what I mean? Exactly. You know, we know what it feels like. I mean, like when it when it when it when it ends, like. Like you don't know how special you have it, and and I, and I had my one of our best years sophomore year, and and during during the season because COVID, so it's like, like you never know, you know, when it's the last time. And what, like they probably have one more home game left, like, and they're probably like, wow, mm -hmm. like, this is crazy. And I know when you're in the yeah. moment, you don't really feel like that, but like, I truly Season's want already them to, done. Yeah, I truly want them to like really feel like like that feeling of like, yo, like this is like. Like this locker room that we have right now, we'll never have. We we won't have this locker room next year. Like people are gonna mm -hmm. leave. Like people are gonna graduate. People could transfer. New guys are gonna come in. So it's like you only have such a limited time of that locker room group together. And I think like, especially my sophomore year, like we really understood that. Like we really were connected. Even even my junior year as well. But you know, COVID had a lot to do with that of like making it difficult for us to be together and stuff like that. But definitely, our my sophomore year, like we kind of like we played that way, and I and that 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 carried on to the court, and we played with such a passion for each other, and and it ended up helping us out, you know, getting wings and stuff like that. So I want that group to really know that, like, if they play together and just like have a sense of togetherness all the time, and even through the bad stuff, even through like if someone doesn't make the right play, like just have each other's back, cause like that right. shit matters for real. I, I couldn't agree with you more. Make sure to like and subscribe to the Philly 68 Media Network. Mark and Zagorowski, bro, I appreciate you so much for spending a little bit of time with me once again, stepping into the J with me once again. So good to hear from you and all the good things that's happening for you and for your career. Uh, any last words that you'd like to say to Blue Jays fans who are listening today? Uh, yeah, y'all should be excited. You know these. You know they're gonna they, they're gonna play well these last couple games of the season. They're gonna get you know three. They got three games left, right? Uh, yeah. yeah, they got three games left. Yeah, they, Nova is the next one on Saturday. Yeah, they're going to get three wins and then, you know, on to New York City. And, um, you know, I feel like they have a, they, they got a chance to win that Big East tournament. You know, they really do. You know, obviously, Coach has been the chip, like, more times than we've been in the Big East tournament. You know, it's time to it's time to really win one. So I'm excited to watch them. And, and you know, they the fans should be, too. You know, they're they're coming along and, you know, they'll get they'll get hot soon. They, they will. Yeah, and we're definitely hoping that they do too. Hopefully, they limit those turnovers as well. Uh, that game against Villanova is going to be no joke, no cakewalk for sure. Um, sure. So yeah, again, but... Marcus, I, I certainly appreciate uh, you stepping into the J with me one more time. Uh, before we head out, I'd like to say on behalf of everybody here at Welcome to the J, we'd like to send our sincere condolences to Will Artino and his family as they deal with the death of his father, Bill Artino. Uh, this past week. Will, we love you. We care for you, bro. Anything that you need, just reach out. You know, we're right there for you. 
Uh, it is sad news for all of us because we do consider this Blue Jay family a very extended family. When news like that kind of hits, it kind of affects all of us. So, Will, we're thinking about you, brother. Again, we love you, uh, and we hope that, you know, you find the strength for you and your family to go through these tough uh, times. Uh, thank you guys for listening. Send a prayer out for the Artino family if you have time. Uh, thank you once again. And uh, this has been another episode of the Welcome to the J Podcast.